What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Kenai Peninsula Weekly Fishing Report. In this video, I go over emergency orders, fish counts, and of course, on the ground field reporting. Uh, and if you've been a regular listener to this show, I want to stop for a second and say thank you very much. It means a lot to me. My channel's really taken off. And if you've been a longtime listener and these fishing reports haven't been necessarily for you, maybe you don't live in Alaska, maybe you're not a big fisherman. Well, I got some good news for you, and I got some good news for everyone who's been listening to me. I do a lot of other content, a lot more outdoor-oriented content, camping, hiking, fishing, hunting, uh, of course. And I'm going to be transitioning into more of those outdoor videos. And I got a new one coming up this week. So for my longtime viewers, you guys are going to like that. Uh, and for my new-time viewers, uh, why don't you hit that subscribe button, share, like, subscribe, because the Salmon Run will be over at the end of the summer, and my content will be transitioning toward more of that outdoor content. So like I said before, I'm going to be doing this all the way through the end of August, and let's get right into it. It is August 2nd when I'm doing this video, and we do have some emergency orders to go over. Uh, unbaited single hook artificial lures only in the Kenai River. Kenai River anglers are advised that in an effort to continue protection of late run king salmon, the Alaska Department of Fishing Game is prohibiting the use of bait and multiple hooks in the Kenai River from its mouth upstream to the outlet of Skelac Lake. This is effective August 1st through August 15th. So I think the reason they're doing this emergency order is because that little upper stretch of the river, you're actually able to, to use eggs for those big rainbow trout that live up there. Looks like they are closing that completely to protect the king salmon. Fishing for king salmon in the Kenai River is currently closed by emergency orders, but anglers are reminded that king salmon fishing closes by regulation on August 1st, including catch and release fishing. Incidentally, caught king salmon may not be retained or possessed. King salmon caught while fishing for other species may not be removed from the water and must be released immediately. Anglers should exercise good angling practices by avoiding fishing for coho salmon in areas of the river where king salmon are concentrated and to cut leaders or lines to avoid stressing, incidentally, hooked king salmon. So those coho salmon, those silver salmon, they're going to start running here, guys, probably this week. Um, and those are really fun to fish for, but you got to be careful that you don't hook a king. That's why they won't let you use eggs. So through July 28th, approximately 5,296 king salmon. Um, and the way they measure this is with sonar. So they actually measure the fish by sonar while they swim through the river. So that's 75 centimeters mid-eye to tail fork and longer. So they're 75 centimeters long. Have passed through river mile 13.7 king salmon sonar. In-season projection estimates... In season projections estimate an escapement of approximately 9,800 large king salmon well below the escapement goal of between 15,000 to 30,000. Therefore, these measures are warranted to continue to conserve late run Kenai king salmon needed for escapement. The Kenai River king salmon late run is currently projected to not meet the minimum escapement goal, and it is necessary to restrict the use of bait and multiple hooks in order to reduce mortality of incidentally caught king salmon that are still entering the river and those that have already reached spawning locations. Restriction actions to reduce the harvest of Kenai River king salmon are being taken in the commercial fishery as well. So if you guys are thinking the commercial fisheries are still able to catch them, it looks like they are restricting that as well. So while we ramp up for silver seasons, we still have a ton of sockeye. The season isn't even halfway over yet. And yeah, we're seeing great numbers. So if you guys have been fishing this week, it's been real. Let's see, we've had 77,000 July 31st, 47,000 July 30th. That's a weekday, but 74,000 before that, 58,000, 62,000. And yeah, I think these numbers are about to peak uh, because look at this chart. It's almost um, paralleling, what was that, 2019, the dips and the trends. So it looks like we have a couple more peaks headed our way. And, you know, I've, if you guys have been watching the show for all summer, you know, I like to say when the weather gets hot, those fish are running in, and yes, the weather's been hot these last 48 hours. It's been a hot weekend. It's been really hot, actually. I, I've i been sleeping with my windows open. I went camping this weekend, and wow, it was it was actually it was, it was humid. It was hot. There's a lot of mosquitoes, and I think that's going to bring in the salmon. Those glaciers are certainly melting because we had blue skies all the way back through the mountains, all the way up uh, the peninsula. And uh, if you guys are looking to fish, I think these next couple of days we're going to see some peaks. 
Um, fingers crossed we see a hundred thousand fish stay. Uh, I'll be happy with a ninety thousand fish day. Uh, but let's see if if we get a hundred thousand fish day, uh, you guys will be the first to know. All right, so let's take a look at those Kenai Chinook estimates. This black line here, yeah, it's low. Um, it's a little sad, not gonna lie, but I've said it before. I think these fish are cyclical, and as long as we got a little bit coming back in, I think they'll make a comeback. We've done a great effort here uh, on keeping the shoreline of the river. Uh, a lot of new vegetation going in. A lot of conservation efforts. 371 came in July 31st. 182 July 30th. 340 July 29th. So we're probably averaging just around 200 fish a day coming into the river so far this year. 6,189. That's the lowest year in the last five years. So yeah, guys, if, if you do hook into a king, make sure you keep it in the water. Russian River Sockeye. This run is just starting to pick up, and it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. I know there's a lot of Russian River fanatics that listen to this channel, and heck yeah, you guys are going to see bears for sure this year because there's a lot of fish running up that river, 18,000 already this year. Uh, see, July 31st, we had 1,500 run through July 30th, another 1,000 July 29th, another 1,500. So, yeah, July 28th, 2,481. That's a big day. It's a big spike. Uh, and we're just going to continue to see those numbers increase if historical trends have anything to do with it, which I think they do, especially with this warm weather that we're finally having is drying out as warm weather is awesome. Uh, they'll say I'm going to be running up the Russian. And let's look at the Kasilov, everybody's favorite river to not fish. And yeah, it's looking good. I think it's a record year, 415,000 fish. Yeah, it's the best year they've had in the last five years for sure. I mean, 9,000 fish came July 31st, 11,000 July 30th, 11,000 July 29th, 11,000 July 28th, 11,000 July 27th, 14,000 July 26th. That's insane. The Kasilov River is is having a, a, an incredible, incredible sockeye run. It's unfortunate that, I don't know what it is, but these fish are hard to catch. I think they run in the middle of the river uh, where it's hard to floss for them from shore. Uh, but if you guys want to try your hand at the Kasilov, by all means, be my guest. It might be a little fun. Okay, so you know I like to say these hot temperatures bring in the salmon. Well, let's take a look at the temperature and water degrees here. So in Fahrenheit, we're looking at 53 degree water temperatures. Now those low salmon counts do coincide July 30th right here, July 31st. We kind of had some cooler weather here, uh, some clouds, a little bit of rain, and then bam, spike back up here at August 1st. That's that hot weather. Now, the water temperature is generally a day behind the air temperatures, um, and that's because water takes a little bit longer to warm up, a little bit longer to cool down. And so, yes, let's look at the air temperature. Uh, July 28th, July 29th, July 30th, we had almost a reduction, if not a low stability, below, below 65 degrees even. And then right here, July 31st, huge spike, over 80 degrees. August 1st, another huge spike, 80 degrees. That's two 80-degree days in a row, guys. That's going to be a big deal with the water flows. It's going to be a big deal for these salmon because these salmon are reaching the peak of their run, and they're looking for a sign to come in. A lot of these fish, they like to wait in the ocean. They're waiting for those signs they want to reproduce. They want to give their fry the best chance possible. The best chance they have is when those glaciers are at peak melt, when we have that surge of fresh water, when they know that if they get up there, the river can only go down instead of up. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, but I know these, are, these it sounds good, right? It sounds good. Uh, so these high temperatures, these are going to be good right here. This just discharge cubic feet. Look at this. We're still below average. It just goes down. And let's take a look at these temperatures down, except for the last two days. Now this discharge is not moving yet. Now these water temperatures only increase for 24 hours. This is 48 hours, soon to be 72 hours of hot weather. So those glaciers are sitting on top of the mountains. They get the sun the last. It takes them the longest to melt. And those glaciers are going to be the biggest uh, indicator of an increase of discharge because we haven't had a lot of rain. And yeah, I think looking here in the next 24, 48 hours, we're going to see an increase in discharge. And that's going to bring those fish in. Same thing with this gauge height. It's been dropping. It's been dropping almost a foot. And so that means the water level, that means the water is clear um, here on the Kenai, but not for long. Like I said before, these hot weather is going to bring in the fish. 
All right, so if you guys haven't yet fished this year on the Kenai, you got to get down here. If you've been fishing all season, well, I, the fishing's only getting better. I'm going to use this week and next week to really hit the freezer, fill it, because these sake are coming in, and then we're going to be ready for the silver salmon here, the coho's coming in soon, uh, and that's going to be a heck of a lot of fun. I'll probably have a video how to catch those. Um, I already have a video how to floss. If you guys are interested, check that out. Share, like, subscribe. I'll talk to you. <laughs> Share, like, subscribe. I'll talk to you guys next week.